The movie starts with Yuki and Anna in a car with a bunch of contestants applying for a million dole. Lar job. Back to the flashback Yuki, in a desperate search for a job and an old friend, Anna tells him about an amazing opportunity to earn a million dollars in a week. Although the announcement looks appealing, they decide to see where it leads. Cut to the present. Yuki and 10 other people were then taken to a place called the Intertum Experimental Foundation, which was said to collect psychological data on 10 people. They walk inside hoping to find an explanation, but the building turns out to be completely empty. A robotic voice then reveals that they will be living together for the next week under heavy camera surveillance with no phones or computers. And if anyone wants to live in the place they can live now. The voice also says that everyone will be monitored for 24 hours for this experiment. All they have to do is survive for the week and take home the $1 million prize money at the end. When they reached the end of the stairs, they came to a room with a large dining table. When everyone had entered the room, the only door they went through as access in and out, was locked automatically. The 10 people, 5 male and 5 female, then checked the situation in the room. Several people noticed a monitor on the wall showing the remaining time running backward for the next 7 days. However, they are still unsure about the monitor screen under the timepiece, which only displays a 3-digit number that changes when several other people check the dining table, which turned out to have been served various delicious dishes prepared for all of them. Not only that, on the table there are also 10 miniature statues dressed in Indian customs. The 10 people then decided to eat together and get to know each other. During the introduction, one of the figures starts to talk and welcomes them into the game. The figure also introduces an assistant robot to them named Guard, who will work and protect the guest of the house. After that, some rules come on the wall screen and the figure starts to explain to them what they have to do to survive. The figure said that everyone can do anything until 10 p.m., and after that, they have to go to their room. Anyone who stays outside after 10 p.m. will be eliminated. If anyone finds out any crime happening, they have to solve that by conducting an investigation themselves. The one who will lead the investigation will be rewarded. And after seven days, the remaining two people will win the game and take all the money for themselves. When the figure is done talking, one of the participants named Nishino starts to talk about a possible psychopath being with them in that room. Yuki replies with a positive tone and says that all they have to do is survive for seven days without doing anything. An old man named Undo, another participant backs him up. The figure starts to talk again and mentions the key cards of the separate rooms. After that, everybody starts to do their own things, except Nishino. He goes to other people and confuses them with information that causes distrust and confusion. After 10 p.m. everybody goes back to the room as instructed. Inside the room, Yuki finds a mysterious box. Yuki opens the box with his room card and sees a fire poker inside. Yuki closes the box immediately and goes back to sleep. In the morning, Yuki woke up after hearing screams from the hallway. When he goes to the hallway, he finds out that someone killed Nishino with a gun. This scares Yuki, so he starts to scream as well toward the door too. Stop the experiment. However, he receives no reply. Meanwhile, the guard robot takes Nishino's body and throws it inside a coffin. A voice in the speaker says that a solution is needed, so they have to investigate. Hearing this, Osako steps in and accuses Iwai of the murder. Most of the participants vote in favor of Osako, which makes the guard throw Iwai inside a prison. After going back to the room, Yuki finds out that his fire poker changed into a gun. Yuki counts the bullets only to find out that no shot was fired with this gun. That same night, a participant named Fuchi goes outside the room after 10 p.m. to find another copy of the comic book she was reading. But when she comes out of the room, another participant named Byoru kills her with a nail gun. In the morning when everybody finds the dead body, people start to panic and accuse each other, causing mayhem in the house. Otoko brings out his weapon, a knife to threaten Yuki, but Ando intervenes. Ando shares the fact that his son came to this house to participate in this game before. He also says that after seeing all this confusion and victim-blaming game, there's no doubt that his son was affected by this cruel experiment before. That night, Ando goes to Yuki's room and offers to patrol the hallway, because he remembers when and how the guard patrols the hallway. At night, Yuki and Shoko start to petrol the building but the robot suddenly changes course and this scares them deeply. They both manage to hide barely. The next morning, they find Osako's crushed dead body inside the coffin room. They understand that Osako died by being crushed by the ceiling. Later, they find Maki with a remote control that could control the ceiling's movement, indicating that Maki killed Osako. Maki denies this, and in his defense, attacks both Yuki and Ando with his weapon, a crossbow. But Osako's girlfriend Tachibana saves them by killing Maki with an axe, but after that, she takes her own life as well. Then, we see Ando, Yuki, and Ando sit and talk about a possible killer who crushed Osako. 
because they had enough proof that Maki wasn't the killer and Tachibana also didn't kill Osako. At night, Yuki visits Bioru's room to know more about her but suddenly starts to fall down without any reason. Bioru reveals that she mixed muscle relaxant into the tea that they drank earlier, and she's going to do anything to survive the game, for her child. Yuki barely escapes the room, but Bioru gets caught by the guard, who then shoots Bioru and kills her on the spot. After this, Yuki realizes that this is how Nishino died in the first place. In the morning, Yuki reveals this hypothesis and the voice from the speaker accepts the verdict. Now there's only one murder that's left to solve, Osako's. Yuki proposes that they'll do nothing on the last day, and they'll leave their weapon in the dining room. Ando follows his request, but surprisingly, Shoko refuses. The next morning, Yuki finds out that the gun is gone and when he goes to check, he realizes that the prison is open as well. When he goes to the coffin room, he finds Ando's body inside a coffin. Suddenly, Awaya attacks Yuki from behind and tries to kill him. Iwai reveals that he is the mystery road attacker in the news. Iwai also reveals that the remote control was his weapon and he was the one who killed Osako. After that, he threw the remote that Maki found which caused his death as well. Later, Iwai tries to kill Yuki but Shoko comes between them with the gun to save Yuki. However, Iwai takes the gun away from her and proceeds to shoot Yuki. But the gun backfires and instantly kills Iwai. It's revealed that Ando messed with the gun so that anyone who ends up taking the gun will end up killing himself or herself. The mysterious figure starts to talk again and announces Yuki and Shoko as the winner. The door opens and they both come out of the room, where a man waits for the winners with a big sum of money as a reward. Shoko finally revealed that she had been working for the Game Master and was responsible for making the game as interesting as possible to increase the number of viewers. Shoko also admitted that she was the one who opened the door to the prison cell. Not only that, it turns out that Shoko put the gun in the box in Yuki's room. After saying everything, Shoko walks away, but Yuki then chases after her and asks why Shoko involved herself in the deadly game, and replies that a coward would look very attractive to the audience when trapped in a deadly game. But when Yuki asked why Shoko was helping him, she just kept quiet and got into the car. The film ends by showing Mr. Ando, who unexpectedly turns out to be still alive and only pretends to be dead because he is determined to survive until the end of the game and get out of the deadly game alive. Yuki and Mr. Ando then walked home together. Yuki then threw away the bag containing the money. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos. Leave a like and comment to help the channel out.